In this video, I'll go over some Toon Boom color basics. For demo purposes, I'll be using this goblin jump animation I did. There are a couple of ways to start laying in color for Toon Boom. I'll talk about using the color layer method later in the video, but first I'll just show you how paint bucket and basic color works in general. I'm going to duplicate the line drawing layer first and rename it to color. You don't have to do this, but I like having a line layer to go back to just in case. Next, in the color window, I'll create a new scene palette and name it Goblins 2. You can create palettes for specific characters and import it to different files. Next, I'll create a swatch for the Goblin skin and name it Goblin underscore skin. I use the HSB color system rather than RGB and I'll pick green. Once the swatch is created, you can start laying in colors with the paint bucket tool. You can click to fill in an area. You can also drag over parts of your drawing to fill in more than one part at a time, including the color of the line itself. Sometimes though, you don't want a color to change. For example, maybe I want the line color of my drawing to stay black. Toon Boom has a paint bucket option called Paint Unpainted that will preserve any area or line with a color already assigned to it. Now, when I drag over multiple areas, the color of the line is preserved because it is considered already painted. Let's say I want the eyes to be a different color. I can create a new swatch, name it, and pick a color for the eyes. With the swatch selected, I can go to my paint bucket tool, select the repaint option, and paint over the green with yellow. Now the eyes are yellow. Now I can go ahead and finish painting the rest of the drawing. You'll notice that sometimes when I click, the entire shape of, let's say, the leg doesn't get filled. This is because in my drawing, the shapes are not entirely closed. I have gaps in my line drawing. Toon Boom is pretty forgiving though, and will make good guesses as to what areas I want to be filled with color if I keep clicking the unfilled areas. This is because the software provides ways to handle gaps uh, in line drawings. Let's go close up on the foot where you can see the gap in the lines for the toes. Toon Boom has an option in the Paint Bucket tool properties where you can set how you want it to interpret gaps. When it's set to close large gaps, Toon Boom will make a guess and close the gap for you with an invisible line. If I set the option to don't close gaps, undo the color fill, and try to fill the toe shape again, it won't fill because Toon Boom is no longer closing the gap for me. In general, I set the option to close large gaps. Another thing I've noticed is that gaps can be interpreted differently depending on how zoomed out or in you are. Let's say I set it to close small gaps. When I'm zoomed out, I'm able to paint the shape, but when I zoom in, I'm unable to. As if when zoomed in, the gap, I guess, appears larger to Toon Boom. Uh, I'm not sure why that happens, but it does. Sometimes you can zoom out and fill a shape easier than when zoomed in. Or you could always just make sure your line drawings are super clean and have no gaps. A powerful feature of Toon Boom is its smart color system. Let's say I've colored a couple of frames and I changed my mind about the skin color of the goblin. I can click on the goblin skin swatch, change the color, and Toon Boom will apply the color change to any drawing that is assigned that swatch. This can save a lot of work. Now let's take a look at using color layers. I'll make another duplicate layer of my line drawing. With this layer, I'll color the goblin using a color art layer. In Toon Boom, you can switch a drawing layer from line art to color art without having to create a separate color layer like we did earlier in this video. You can do this by clicking on this icon or hitting the shortcut key L. When you are in the color art mode, you won't be able to paint in the shapes until you convert the line brush strokes into a vector line drawing. You do this by clicking on this icon, create color art from line art. Once you do this, you can see that the line drawing has been converted to a vector line complete with anchor points you could adjust if you wish. Now you can go ahead and fill in color with the paint bucket, change the colors, etc. In color art mode, the orange anchor points mean that there are gaps in the line. Another way to manually close gaps is to go to the close gap tool on the toolbar under the paint bu bucket tool and manually draw in a line to close a gap. The points turn to blue once you close a gap, and then you can fill uh, more easily. 
Another cool p feature of uh, Toon Boom's color system is that you can import palettes you've already set up in one scene into another scene or another file. So let's say we set up a new file and want to use the gob goblin colors we set up previously. Right click in the palette area and choose import. Navigate to your previous file, file, go to the palette library and select the appropriate palette. In this case, we had named our palette Goblins 2, so I'll select that. As you can see, now you have the same color swatches from the original Goblin file into this new file. Some things to be aware of as you color your drawings. Sometimes it is better to use the color art mode to color your scenes, especially if you use a bitmap brush. For example, let's say you choose the watercolor brush to draw with. It has a nice texture to it, but if you try to color the shape in the line art mode, you'll notice that there's a white border around the color. If you don't want that white border and you want to completely fill the shape, you have to go to the color art layer, convert lines to color art, and then fill again. This is a good instance where using the color art layer matters. The reason being, certain brushes in Toon Boom have this sort of stroke, where instead of like a vector line, it's like a shape path in itself. Hence, when you fill, there's a white halo effect created. When you convert line art to color art, you convert the path into a vector line and the shape can now be completely filled, or the shape that you drew. One last thing to keep in mind when laying in color is that to take advantage of the smart color system, the drawing art layer has to be set to vector, not bitmap. If you change it to bitmap, you use a different color system and lose the ability to have colors automatically sync when you change the swatch.